Now that I've made guides on how to combo and how to defend in Sparking Zero, before you do any of that, you have to know how to approach your opponent. How do you get from here to there without them punching you first? And you might go, Globku, it's easy. Just start a super dash and then press the button again and you spark dash behind your opponent. Done. To which I'll say, oh, oh, okay, yeah, it is that simple. Just burst dash. The thing is, burst dash is incredibly powerful. One bar of key and you're instantly behind your opponent. But because your opponent knows that, he might be looking for a way to counter you, which makes burst dashing very unsafe. So in this video, I'll explain exactly how to counter burst dashes, how to use them in a way that is a lot safer than simply just doing it off rip, and other ways to approach your opponent that don't involve burst dashing at all. So before we dive into all of that, let's talk about how you would approach a different country. By plane? By car? Well, how about surfing a shark? More specifically, Surfshark, the sponsor of today's video. The only VPN that has reached the coverage of 100 countries, meaning you can browse the web as if you were on any of them. Surfshark came in incredibly clutch during this past weekend for Ultimate Burst. Because in case you didn't know, you need to be on the same country to set up PlayStation Remote Play for the first time. Why did we need Remote Play? Well, thanks to Surfshark, I was able to get Trader, who is all the way in Hungary, to set up Remote Play for my console so he could help me run the biggest Sparking Zero tournament ever and I could actually take some toilet breaks. And if you follow my link, you can get an extra four months for free when you sign up at surfshark.com slash And guess what? Trader used my account because you can simply log in on unlimited devices. Whether it be PC, Mac, iOS or Android, even gaming consoles, it's got apps for all platforms. And they also have a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it out completely risk free. And if it's not for you, just ask for your money back. And that's why they're such a good sponsor for this channel. I've worked with them for years over many, many videos and I never got a single complaint. So go to surfshark.com slash get four extra months for free. The link is down below and thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. For this entire video, we're going to be using standard controls and PlayStation buttons. Everything I say works on classic controls too, as well as other consoles. You just got to translate the buttons yourself. Okay, so just in case you haven't even played the tutorial, you super dash by holding down R2 and hitting X. You can also super dash manually in any direction by tilting the stick and this absolutely sucks for approaching. It is slow, it spends a ton of key, it can sometimes be used to run away, especially vertical flight, it's very hard to catch. But if your goal is approaching, then forget about this. What you're looking for is the burst dash, which you can do after you start super dashing. And this happens if you just hit the X button again. You will instantly consume one bar of key and get to your opponent's back. This is called a burst dash, and the entire Sparking Zero neutral revolves around this, whether it's using it or counterattacking it. This is the core of how you approach your opponent. Now, there are two things you can do from a burst dash. You can hit a button, square or triangle, it doesn't matter here, and your character will do an attack after dashing. Or you can do nothing, which has a huge recover animation, but there are ways of getting rid of it and go for some other options. Now, if you are approaching your opponent, you have to learn the second method, and I will teach you how to do it, but first you kind of know why that's important. If someone uses a burst dash and presses one button, there are so many ways of countering them. Like so many that I'll probably miss a few in this video, but let's try. The first thing you need to worry about is making your character face your opponent, because burst dash is going to put them behind you. So how do you turn around? In this game, you can do this in two different ways. When you press the block button, your character will face their opponent. But they take a while to turn around and they won't turn automatically if you're just holding the block button. You gotta let go and press it again, meaning if you mistime this, it actually won't work. So for burst dashes, I think the best way to keep facing your opponent is to hold any direction. Just keep moving. By doing that, your character will keep facing your opponent no matter what. So as soon as you see them behind you, you can go for a counterattack. Many people fail to do this because they're just sitting still, key charging, and by the time they notice the burst dash, it is already too late. But by simply moving, you can see them dashing and you will prevent them from getting your back. And now that you're facing them, how do you counterattack? Let's talk about it. First of all, you can simply block. And if they come in with a button and you block that first attack, you go back to neutral, you're plus zero, which means that if you both mash, you will simply clash with your opponent. I don't recommend doing this because you are reacting to the block and they're just mashing, so they can react faster than you, theoretically at least. But blocking is a very safe way to stop this approach. Since you can block though, you can also use perception. Now you need to use one bar of skill for this, as this attack does not count as a basic rush move. So if you're on zero skill, you will still get punched. But if you want to create some space, spending one skill might be worth it. If not, block the first attack and then use perception 
option if you think they're gonna keep mashing. You can also sidestep. This used to be my main way of countering burst dashes, but I don't think it's that good anymore. I mean, you you'll see why soon. But if you know your opponent is going to mash after a burst dash with a well-timed sidestep, you will actually gain their back and punish them with your own combo. The problem is if they don't mash, but we'll get there. If you're the GOAT, you can even time your step in. If you watch the defensive guide, you know that this has invulnerability frames. And after the step in, you can mash or you can hold perception, because if they're mashing their button, you'll actually get a free perception off without spending any skill points, because now you're actually countering a basic rush move. You know what? Go watch the defensive guide if you haven't already. Most of the options that I mentioned there actually work here. But there are a couple of unique options that weren't mentioned in the defense guide that are actually very useful for this particular situation. One of them is mashing. Now you have to time your mash, but if you do it correctly, you can catch your opponent before their first attack even comes off. This may be a bit hard to do in lag, but it is an option worth mentioning. Just don't forget that you gotta keep moving in order to face your opponent the right way. And then you have arguably the best option that exists for stopping burst dashes, which is shooting key blasts. Your opponent is also getting hit before they can even punch you, and this doesn't just counter this approach, it can counter a couple of others. Key blasts are very strong, but this game is very much based on how much key you have compared to your opponent, and key blasts spend key. So you can't simply just shoot them, make sure you still have the key advantage when you do so. Because yes, you may counter a burst dash, but that may put you in a worse position if you end with less key than your opponent. That said, if you're able to use them right, that's how you beat the number one player in America. And so as you can see here, there are a ton of ways to counter burst dash into a button, which is why I don't recommend people simply do this. There are situations where it's good, for instance, if you're punishing a whiffed move, or if you're trying to stop an instant spark. Yeah, sure, go for it. But if you're both playing neutral, this is very easy to counter. So instead of doing that, I would go for the second option, which is a burst dash into nothing. Now, as you can see, this has a ton of recovery. So how come I can burst dash and immediately throw key blasts? I thought that if you hit the triangle button, a different attack comes out. Yeah, yeah, that's true, but you can also cancel that recovery animation by blocking. So if you burst dash and then block, you can then attack your opponent with anything. And this is extremely powerful, because if they have been blocking your approach, you can cancel into a grab. If they've been using perception, you can punish them with key blasts. If they have been sidestepping, you can counter their sidestep with one of your own. This is really, really good. You can play a ton of mind games from this situation. You can essentially delete all those counters that I just told you one by one, uh, except key blasts. That one is really good. But you can make your approach even safer if you throw some key blasts of your own before you even start dashing. They might be normal key blasts or charged key blasts, that kind of depends on your character. But by doing this, your opponent has to deal with oncoming fire at the same time as they're trying to turn around to deal with your approach. But let's forget about super dashing for a second. Have you considered not approaching at all? This is a game about key management first. Usually the one with the most key has the advantage, even if they are down on health, because one interaction can completely turn the tide of battle. And so, very often, instead of rushing towards your opponent, you can slowly get closer, covering your approach with key blasts or charge key blasts, and they'll be stuck in place dealing with that while you get closer and closer. However, this can also be a very expensive ordeal. A lot of key blasts mean spending a lot of key, which is why it's important to have the key advantage if you're going for this. It's even better if you manage to be in sparking mode and your opponent isn't, because then your short dashes are free and so are your key blasts, and this approach is really hard to stop depending on the character you're playing. Now, now, some characters can't spam infinite key blasts. There will be a break. They'll shoot like three, four, maybe five key blasts and then stop before they can shoot again. And if that's the case, you can actually counter this very easily by just flying away. Vertical dashing is incredibly powerful. You do have to look out for beam attacks because they can track you vertically. But if you're worried about key blast spam, then you can spam vertical dashes. It's super hard to catch you. If, on the other hand, you run into a character that has infinite key blasts, your best option is probably to block them. You'll take chip damage, but deflecting can be even more dangerous, since every ultimate in this game essentially becomes unblockable if you are deflecting. So to summarize, the entire Sparking Zero Neutral revolves around burst dashing. If you want to approach safely, start by throwing some key blasts and then use your burst dash. Tap the block button to cancel the recovery animation and mix your opponent with rush attacks, grabs, key blasts or sidesteps. But keep in mind that approaching isn't always necessary. This is mostly a game about key management. So if you manage to get Sparking Mode without your opponent getting it, key blasts are going to be your best friend. Key blast spam 
is very hard to stop in this game, especially if you have the right character for the job. And if you're looking to fully unlock the power of the internet, the right character for the job is definitely Surfshark. Grab those four extra months for free, the link is down below. And that's gonna do it for Sparking Zero Guides, that is the trilogy, combos, defense and approach. The game may change completely in the future with upcoming patches, but fundamentals like these are always important to learn. From this knowledge, it becomes way easier for you to adapt as a player to whatever new meta is coming. And if you've missed any of my previous guides, check out the playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching, boy.